we're going to take a look here. I'm sure my screen again because we're going over Jonah. Uh, Jonah, one of our prophets in the Old Testament, one of our minor prophets. So we went over major prophets last two weeks. These are minor prophets. So that means these are kind of, uh, usually their books are just a lot smaller. That's why they're called minor prophets. And their reign as a prophet is a lot shorter. So Jonah is one of our minor prophets. What's different about Jonah than most of the minor prophets is we really don't get a lot of what Jonah says, but we get a lot of Jonah's life or really kind of like a, kind of a week in Jonah's life. Uh, and I love the story of Jonah. This is one of my favorite books in the Bible. So I'm really excited to go over this site. So Jonah is going to bring us up to some questions here uh, that I think are important when we read the Bible. These <laughs> kinds of questions are the kinds of questions I start asking. So first we are starting asking like, what is the natural state of mankind? So if mankind is left on their own, are they naturally good or are they naturally bad? And then we start asking like, what is the natural state of God? Is he just or merciful? And just would mean like he desires justice or kind of like a, um, like a courtroom setting and mercy would mean you got to get forgiven and scot-free. And if the Bible describes something miraculous, what Jonah is probably most known for what would Jonah be most known for, you guys, if you've watched The Veggie Tale? You can just say it. The whale. The whale, swallowed by a whale. Is that legit? Did that really happen? Uh, is it definitely happened or is it exaggerated? So I'm going to open up a poll here. This is an anonymous poll, and you're going to give your answers to these three questions, and we'll kind of see how we, as a confirmation group, see the world right now. So what's the national state of mankind? That means if humans are just left on their own, do they do good things or bad things? What is the kind of the natural state? Natural state of God. So say uh, somebody steals your bike, what would God be most concerned about? Punishing the person who stole the bike or showing mercy to the person who stole the bike? And uh, when the Bible says something miraculous, is it most likely definitely happened or most likely an exaggeration? So here's our poll and I'm gonna launch the polling and you can just vote on our poll here. Uh, and it's anonymous, so you don't need to think like, is this the right answer or the wrong answer? Because I can say probably for each and every one of these things, you can make a pretty good case for both. So uh, just what lean, what do you lean closer to? <clears throat> All right, we see these answers coming in. Right away, it seems like we do not have a very good opinion of humanity. And uh, that's probably fair. <laughs> I was in a middle school once upon a time too, and uh, yeah, I get it, so. All right, so we're coming in here. 21 out of 25 have voted, a few more. If you've not voted, last chance, last chance to get in there. All right, we're gonna end our polling here in three, two, one, ending the polling. All right, so there we go. If you, can everybody see the polls? So we as a group think mankind is a little more evil than good. God is more merciful than just. And we're probably on, it's an exaggeration when we see the miraculous thing right there. I think that's interesting. Okay, so that's where we're going to have. And Jonah is going to be asking some of these questions as we read the book. Some of these things pop up for me as I read it. So I think that this is important. All right, so now I am going to. Where's the answers to the poll? I didn't see that. Oh, well, one second. I made Pastor David the host. Uh, now he probably has the polling. I can say, I can tell you, most people said, there you go. Can everybody see that? Okay. Yeah. There you go. So not uh, not a runaway on each, on any of them, but, um, you know, definitely a majority have landed on evil, merciful, and it's probably an exaggeration. All right, so let's get into Jonah, the prophet Jonah. All right, so here we go, Jonah, chapter one, verse one. And we're gonna move pretty quickly here through Jonah. So the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amity, go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness have come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed to Tarshish. He went down to Joppa where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went abroad and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. So Nineveh would be kind of like in the Middle East, 
Tarshish is in Spain, so where Jonah is in Israel is the exact opposite direction. He is fleeing away from Nineveh. And so we see kind of here this idea, is mankind kind of naturally evil? Well, Nineveh is pretty evil. Nineveh is left to their own devices, and they're evil. And they're not just evil because they're not the Israelites. They're evil because they are really bad. They practice human sacrifice. Uh, they're a war, they're very much a warmongering society. Uh, they are not good people. We would not look at the Nevites and be like, yeah, you know, I think they're just misunderstood as they're sacrificing their children to their gods. We would say like, that's wrong, right? Like we're, we're pretty firmly against, that's that's not something that's uh, that's good. <clears throat> In the Veggie Tales, they slap people with rotten, rotten fish. Yes, so uh, that's obviously wrong. You never want to slap somebody with a rotten fish, you know? Fresh fish, it's whatever, but rotten is gross. All right, so Jonah gets on the boat, and we're going to fast forward here. He falls asleep, and a storm comes on the boat, and the sea was getting rougher and rougher, so they asked him, what should we do to make the sea calm down for us? Jonah says, look, I got the solution. Pick me up, throw me into the sea, and it will become calm. <clears throat> They're like, that's weird. So instead, the men do their best to row back to the land, but they could not. For the sea grew wilder than before. And they cried to the Lord, please, Lord, do not let us die for taking this innocent man's life. Do not hold us accountable <coughs> for killing an innocent, innocent man for you. Lord, I've done with him as you please. So they took Jonah and they threw him overboard. And the man greatly feared the Lord and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to him. <coughs> now the Lord provided a huge fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. <coughs> Sorry, I've got a bad cold. I'm kicking here. <coughs> All right. So some questions right away for us that I have. One, is Jonah the good guy in this story? He doesn't really seem to be the good guy. God, he's the prophet of God, but God asked him to do something and he runs away. Um, <clears throat> he is asked to be killed, to thrown into the ocean because he's not interested in doing what God desires for him to do. And the pagan sailors who he's sailing with seem better than Jonah. Like they're trying to save his life when he just kind of wants to be thrown into the water. And when they see the miracle of God, they worship God right in front of them. So maybe these sailors are kind of this proof that maybe if mankind encounters God in some way, they can be converted to be good, to doing the right thing. They want to save Jonah's life, even if it would be easier to throw him in the ocean. And then the natural question for all of us, right? Like, is this fish thing legit? He gets thrown into the water and a giant fish comes and swallow him. That sounds made up. <coughs> well, what's interesting about the book of Jonah is whoever wrote the book of Jonah doesn't really seem to care about the fish all that much. It's mentioned twice in the entire book <coughs> and it's not really made that big of a deal of. It's kind of like, hey, this fish happened, he swallowed him and we just move on. The person who wrote Jonah has no concern if you think the fish is real. That's not the important part of the story. <coughs> it's going to be what happens next. So Jonah goes into the fish, and there he's going to make a prayer. <coughs> Sorry, man, it's cold. <coughs> and there he's going to pray, and he's not really going to apologize, but he is going to say, God, um, if you really, really want me to go to Nineveh, I guess I will. <coughs> All right, so let's move on. <coughs> Give me a break here. Somebody read this for us here in chapter three. I got you. Jonah chapter 3. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now, Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began going a day's journey into the city, proclaiming, 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. The Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed, and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. So David. All right, so that's Jonah chapter three. So Jonah goes in there as a prophet. He only gets his one speech here to the people. It's kind of a terrible speech. 40 more days and Nineveh will be overturned. And he's kind of just saying it to no one. Yet for some reason they believe him. And they're like, okay, this sounds reasonable. This sounds good. And they all repent. Uh, in the past, the, we skipped a few there. The king even hears this. He repents. He tells the animals to repent. The whole town repents. And God sees this and shows them mercy. So we started asking a question, right? Like, is God's mercy dependent on people repenting? 
Yes or no? And that's a good question, right? Like, does do we need to say we're sorry for God to say you're forgiven? Here in the book of Jonah, we would say, well, maybe. Maybe that's uh, something we would land on. Maybe we read other stories in the Bible and we'd say, maybe not. Maybe that's not something we would land on. But <clears throat> God's justice against them was first displayed of like, they're bad. They do the wrong thing. They should be destroyed. And yet they change and we see God's mercy poured out against them. And they don't even really change. They just say, we should have a fast and put on sackcloth and figure out how to do better. So God is really merciful here too. So we kind of see these two parts of God back to back, one after the other. And then chapter four of Jonah is where things get really interesting. My favorite uh, part of Jonah here as it ends. <clears throat> so it says this, but to Jonah, this seemed very wrong and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord. Isn't this what I said, Lord, when I was still at home? This is what I tried to forestall by fleeing to Tarshish. I knew you were a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. Now, Lord, take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. But the Lord replied, is it right for you to be angry? So Jonah, we get it out. Is Jonah the good guy? It's pretty firmly, no, he's not the good guy. He's mad that God has mercy to the Ninevites. He's mad that the people he does not like, God forgives. But it does bring us another question. Is God's mercy fair? Because when we think that God is merciful, that also means God is merciful to the people who used to bully me. And God is merciful to the friends who gossip about me. And God is merciful to the people who, uh, to the to the boyfriend or girlfriend who cheats on you, and God is merciful to the jerk at work who uses uh, <clears throat> underhanded techniques to get the promotion instead of you. That God is merciful to murderers. God is merciful to thieves, and that doesn't seem fair, right? Like I like it when God is merciful to me, but I don't like it when God is merciful to the people who have wronged me. Those are the people that God needs to show justice to. <clears throat> but when we say God's natural state is mercy, well, then he's gonna be merciful to the people I don't like and the people I don't think deserve it. And that can be hard. Is God's mercy fair? So Jonah is a bit of a drama here and he wants to just die in the desert uh, because he's mad at God. And that's pretty, uh, he's like slamming his door and saying, I, I hate my life and I hate all of you to his family. And I don't need, I don't care about this food. You know, he's a bit of a drama. You guys get it. You're teenagers. All right. So we got, go on. So Jonah sat down. We're going to read the whole chapter four because I think it's awesome. Uh, he sat down at a place in the city and he made himself a shelter, sat in shade and waited to see what happened in the city. Then the Lord provided a leafy plant and made it grow up over Jonah and gave shade for his head to ease his discomfort. It was awesome. He had his own little plant. And Jonah was very happy about the plant. But the next day, God provided a worm, which chewed the plant so that it withered. And the sun rose, and God provided a scorching east wind, and the sun blazed on Jonah's head that he grew faint. And he wanted to die, and he said, it would be better for me to die than to live. He's really upset. His plant died, you guys. That's real sad, right? He's got a plant, and then it died. And so he's real bitter and angry. And he's like, Ugh, my life is ruined. Why bother even going on? It's kind of like uh, you really, really wanted, you know, a, a PlayStation, whatever, five, and you didn't get it for Christmas. And you're like, my life is ruined. I really wanted to do this one thing. My parents told me, no, my life is ruined. Why, how could I keep going? My plant died, you guys. You don't even get it. It's better for me to die than to live. <clears throat> But God said to the plant, is it right for you to be angry about the plant? And he said, it is. I'm so angry, I wish I went dead. Jonah's doubling down on his stuff. But the Lord said, you have been concerned about this plant, that you did not tend it or make it grow. You didn't do anything to this plant. Why are you mad about it? It just showed up. Should I not be concerned about the great city of Nineveh, in which there are more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left, and also many animals? The end. That's how Jonah ends. <clears throat> yes. So <clears throat> what do we think? That's a weird ending, right? What do you think here? Give me a, a thought here in the chat, or you could say, 
What does God mean when he says there are not 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from the left? What does that mean? <clears throat> Give us a guess. Anybody got a guess? You guys are really smart. I know you got something. They don't know the, def the difference from good and evil. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they, they're stuck up in the wrong thing. They can't see right from wrong. Yeah. Some people might even say like, you know, who can't tell good, at, you know, their right hand from their left hand? Children. So there could be, it's a city filled with children. And even if you think Nineveh is evil, there's innocence attached to Nineveh. Should I not be concerned about the innocent people there that are not involved in these things? I don't know. We don't know what this means. <clears throat> yeah. They don't know. The, they don't know better. Maybe God is saying, like, if they don't know better, how can I hold them accountable for things that uh, that I think are right, but they just don't know what's right in and, of, in and of themselves? Remember we landed on mankind might be naturally evil or naturally good. Maybe God is saying, like, they cannot help it. They need they needed Jonah to show them how to do better, and Jonah wouldn't do it. And so what do you want? What do you want from me? And then this is how the story ends. There is no more. We don't know anything more about Jonah. We don't know what happens to Jonah. We don't know how God and Nineveh work here. We don't know any of these things. It, the story just ends. And I think this is awesome. This is such a good ending because this story about Jonah <clears throat> is not just his story. It's also kind of our story, right? Like it's going to say like, hey, when God asks you to pronounce forgiveness to those you don't like, do you want to do it? When God asks you to show mercy to those that have hurt you, do you want to do it? When God wants you to show compassion and love to those that are really, really hard to be loved and, and to show compassion to, do you want to do it? And the answer, probably like Jonah, like for many of us, is not really. It's really hard to do those things. It's really hard to be nice to the people who are jerks. It's really hard to be merciful to people who don't deserve it. But God is saying, you're concerned about the plant, you're concerned about the things that are in your life. I'm concerned about the people, even if they don't deserve it. And God is asking us to do the same. Be concerned, even if they don't deserve it. And so I think John is a really awesome story and you're gonna have, a, uh, I think some neat time practicing, processing forgiveness in small group. So that's it.